we're going to tell you something about our experience during the minor last year. Well, first a little introduction about who we are. Maybe you know us. I see some familiar faces here. Uh, I'm Kuhn. This is Alex. And this is Remy. Um, and well, we should be here with four people, but Sebastian is in France. So we have to Skype him later on because he has something to say too. So uh, let's continue. Uh, we're going to tell you something about our project last year. Uh, Remy and I did a Project Moonshot for Nikkev, and Alex did uh, the entropy plot for NFE. And we're going to tell you something about the courses we did last year. I don't think there is a lot of change this no. year. No? Okay. Well, <laughs> few. Uh, so that's computer security, computer forensics, uh, optional computer forensics, research uh, paper, e-discovery is optional too, and biometrics. <coughs> well, uh, project Moonshot. Um, it was a project for NICAF and we did it with six students. And, uh, well, the problem was um, you, you have Aderome here. There you have a, an account for HVA where you can log in to everywhere in the world on an Aderome network. So if you're in Japan, you can log in with your HVA account to connect to the internet. And Nick have wanted to do something uh, similar, but uh, for um, web dev and SSH, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. So we had to do something with EAP, TTLS, Radius, and well, unfortunately the SSH code, <laughs> which is very annoying. The, I don't know if you've watched the, the, the C code of SSH, but yeah, well, if you have wanna laugh, watch it. <laughs> There are some really strange comments in there, and it's a little bit messy. Um, well, you could just call it a maze. It's a maze, yeah. Um, one of the parts of our project was to audit uh, a similar project that Janet was doing, is doing, uh, called Moonshot. Uh, Janet is the kind of equivalent of Surfnet here in the Netherlands. And, well, unfortunately, we didn't get a lot of info from that <coughs> because the um, a lot of documentation that they published was full of placeholders, so unfortunately we couldn't test it very well. Um, what we did was uh, expanding a free radius uh, functionality with uh, our little prototype, which Bastian will tell you something about later. And uh, well, we made a research report about the Janet part and our free radius module. <coughs> And we built the prototype for the free radius module in C. I don't know if Remy has something well, maybe to add. It's interesting to say, um, <laughs> Janet published uh, the Moonshot project as if it was ready for production use, but it obviously wasn't, no. because there was simply no documentation. Um, the parts that actually did work worked only half. Yeah. Um, so don't don't just trust in systems that are published as working, because. No. Well, it's not <coughs> always the case. No, but they had a Debian test environment, but well, we tried to do it on CentOS, but and they said it was working very well. Well, it didn't. <laughs> it didn't at all. <coughs> so uh, you're still in the mailing list, right? Yeah, I'm still in the mailing list. They still have problems with uh, CentOS uh, versions of SSH and uh, the and identity us, manager. For us, it's almost a year ago since we started this. Yeah. And a year ago, they said it was working, and it's still not working. Well, they said two years ago that it was working and it is, well, still not working. Well, I'll give the word to Alex. Yeah. He's going to tell something about his project. Oh, oh yeah. We had a little placeholder problem there. <laughs> <laughs> We're going okay. to uh, well. For the NFE, uh, we did a project called Project Entropy. Uh, for those guys that don't know, Entropy uh, is basically the data randomness of a file. So say you're analyzing a raw hard disk uh, image and there's an encrypted part on it. Encryption has high data randomness, so you'll see straight away, oh, there's a lot of randomness in this section of the hard drive. There must be something encryption-wise on there. Or uh, what the NFE uses it for is, uh, as well is like security footage of a period of 30 <coughs> days or something. Uh, well, to see how many days it really is, you often have to look the whole video, see when it gets dark, when it gets light again. But 
another nice feature is that dark video has a lower data randomness than uh, footage shot during the day or in very light circumstances. So it's quite easy to see the motions of day and night, so you can easily say, hey, well, this is 30 days or this is seven days. Well, what the NFE had at the moment was a command line tool. Uh, and all that did was scan the file with the Shannon entropy formula and put output it per block in a text file. And they got that text file, put it in another tool, made some pretty graphs, made a little report at it, and our goal was to automate it and make it faster. Although, no, they wanted us to automate it, we made it faster. So we took the formulas, uh, it needed to be backwards compatible, so we still had to make those TXT files in our application. So we made it multi-threaded, uh, we tried some with something with the GPU as well. We, we started a bit, but we didn't finish that part. But just with the multi-threading added to it, we managed to analyze 500 gigabytes of data in an hour instead of them running it for 12 hours straight. So in all situations, they would start it at 6 o'clock at night before they went out, and it would be ready at 9 o'clock in the morning. And now in an hour, they had a full report. They had a graph they could just change using a UI, no command line anymore. They could still use the command line if they wanted to. There were a couple of people there that really still wanted to use the command line. I can't imagine why. Uh, but it was really easy to use for everybody there. Uh, one important thing about the project we had, and it's more how it works, a lot of you are, well not a lot, a couple of you are going to end up in a team that doesn't function really well. I mean, there will be a couple of freeloaders here. No offense, uh, hopefully. Um, you just ask Arnim or Elmer to help you figure this out and try to catch it early on so you can do something about it. We waited too long, so we didn't Check bother it. with it. Yeah. Uh, I think a lot of teams have the same because this project coaching isn't mandatory. So with all projects you had, well, the Informatica students will know, every two weeks or so a coaching session. That isn't the case now. You really have to be proactive about it yourself. You're completely on your own. Yeah, so yeah pretty much. I mean, I've seen Arnim two times. Well, every lesson, but two times during the whole project, basically in the middle, because he does do a progress uh, talk. I think he'll do that again this year, right? See how everybody's doing. And I think last year it was pretty much the case. That was in week eight. Uh, lots of people hadn't really started in week eight. Try to, try to get started early, because <laughs> the projects aren't that big. They're quite good to do, and it s saves you so much time if you can just do it three days a week instead of the last seven weeks do everything every day, seven days a week, at night, and get that whole mess out of the way. That's um, not a good idea. Quiet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Next. Yeah. 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 Uh, computer forensics. Uh, well, a couple of courses, I think. Uh, first, first 10 weeks, you have computer forensics theory and practicum, or is that the second 10 weeks? No. No? OK. It's right after this. Well, basically, you'll start with some theory lessons that Arnim will give, and there will be a couple of guest lectures, which are really interesting. Uh, last year, we had ING come over, tell, the, tell us about their security systems implemented and how good they already are in predicting how people, when people will log in, and when they will use their bank account info so they can see which uh, login is rogue or anything. Um, well, assignment was write a forensic report. Uh, I think research papers aren't really a big part yet of our course, so for a lot of people this will be the first time making a real research paper, so that will give a couple of issues probably. Uh, just follow the guidelines, is all I can say. If you tick all the boxes, it's o he's okay with it. I mean, it's quite easy then to get a good grade. Um, yeah, I think that's about um, it. Will you still get a VM image this year? Okay, yeah, last year we got a VM image, um, which was basically basically uh, a copy of a computer which was used in a, in a crime. Yeah, and expected of a crime. Yeah, okay, it was, it was suspected <laughs> of being used in a crime, and it's going to be your job to find out if that's actually true. That's and the that's case study that's mentioned in the planning. If you've looked at the planning, that's the case study. Well, it's a very interesting thing to do. Um, it's, it's, it's good to pay attention during <coughs> the lessons because you're going to get very useful information which you're going to use to solve this case. 
And if you're not paying attention during the lessons, well, you're going to fail, simply. Yeah, and start on time. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> he will say it, and everybody is going to think, well, I'll start in the last week. You're not going to make it. I mean, this process you have to do on that PM, that's going to take 24 hours. At or, least, or more. At least, or if more. you have to do it again. I probably have to do it again, because the first time you forgot that one single checkbox or something stupid like that, you need the time. It isn't, the amount of time you have to put in, it isn't that much, but the amount of time it will take on the background while you're doing something else is quite large. So just make sure you start before the last three or four days. You'll need it even <laughs> earlier. Like yeah, yeah, you'll say earlier. Yeah, yeah, you really need four days straight on. Okay. Well, you still um, have to write a report after that, so. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, uh, the CF research is uh, optional. You can choose between the research and e-discovery. And mm -hmm. Sebastian will tell something later on about his assignment because he was one the only student, I think, last year that did the research paper, so <laughs> he's got something to tell about it. I think uh, e-discovery is very popular, or they just were not in any, any subjects left. Um, well, then you have computer security, also a lot of uh, guest lectures, also and very interesting. And Elmer. Elmer and teaches Elmer. it, of course. Yeah, it's quite interesting, uh, <laughs> just because Elmer teaches it. <laughs> <laughs> I have to agree with you. Uh, no offense, no offense. And it's the same for computer science. <laughs> seriously. Well, uh, well, e-discovery is uh, given by Carla. I don't know if you yeah. know Carla. Um, Carla Bonbelt? Somebody know her? No? Okay. No. Well, you meet her soon. <laughs> She's quite strict. If she asks you for a subject and you have to submit it at Tuesday at 12, submit it before that time. If you don't, she'll just give you a subject and it won't You're be screwed. a lot of fun. <laughs> Seriously, you can choose yourself. Or say, say, last year we had to choose some movie or a uh, crime case or a TV show. Well, if we choose it, well, you choose something like Sherlock or something fun to watch. Mm -hmm. If she has to choose it, it will be something old. Not some documentary. Fun, some documentary. So make sure your submission is in no time. Yeah. Uh, another thing that's mandatory is the e-discovery symposium. I don't know if this year is also mandatory. Yes, but we Probably. have something bigger and better. <laughs> bigger sure. and better. Sure. Better. Sure. Okay. Worldwide <laughs> conference that's coming to the Netherlands. Okay. The okay. Time. Free access? Hmm. Okay. Well, we went to the e-discovery e symposium last year. And, uh, it's uh, the lecture, the lecturer at e-discovery organized it. It was very interesting and probably it will be organized this year too. Uh, and then we have biometrics. Um, it's an interesting overview of existing uh, biometric matching methods. So uh, fingerprints, uh, iris scans, and, and so on and so on. And you have to write a paper, <coughs> or we had to write a paper, or made a keystroke detection application. And I think Alex made that application. This year it will be taught by uh, Carla. Car Carla as well. Okay. Yeah. Right. So it's going to be completely changed because there were some complaints about that class. I think that had something to do with the SNA students. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. Um, well, basically the keystroke detection application was uh, when you enter a password, you do it in a specific way. I mean, you wait one uh, half a second between going from the letter K to the letter O or something, and that's personal. So what we had to do is when you register your password, you do that 10 times, and then we make an average between how long it takes you to enter every key. And then when someone else enters that password, he'll probably do it slower because he doesn't know it from his well, muscle memory. So it might not be a legit uh, login uh, attempt. So then you say, well, it's not that. That's what we had to do. Uh, well, you had the paper as well if you didn't want to write anything. It's the same for the projects. Um, it sounds scary, writing a lot of code or whatever. It uh, really depends on your project if you have to do a lot of that or if it's more research or a bit of both. So depending on what your background is, uh, you have to take a look at the projects and how you want to divide that balance between your group as well. Maybe you're teaming up with someone who's really good in code so you can focus more on research. But also learn a bit about the coding process so that you're not just doing the same stuff you already know. And um, pick the scary projects. I mean, you can, yeah, you can pick an easy project and do it in a few months and you're done, but you wouldn't have learned anything. So pick a scary and a difficult project. You're going to learn the most of it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, some tips and tools. 
what should you do? Well, start on time, mm -hmm. uh, go to the lectures, even if they're late in the afternoon or early in the morning, please go to them. Or um, the, the Surf Ebo? The Surf at Ebo, I don't know if somebody already registered for Surf at Ebo. No? 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 Did you get an email about it? No. Yeah. You probably did. Yeah. Go you there, did, it's you very, just it. very interesting. <laughs> I've seen the program. Yeah, and I, think I, I think it's optional, like last year. But yeah, yeah, it, it adds a lot, and it's quite funny to see they tell something there, and then a week later in the class they also talk about it. So you know, already know it. Uh, well, what what shouldn't you do? Way too long. Ser <laughs> seriously, I can't. <laughs> Computer forensics. That just don't wait too long with that VM. You're gonna have so much issues with the file being too big for the VM you're getting, or something like analyzing it for the hashes, it's going to take long, just take the time for it. Um, what you must not do, I think Arnim covered that basically, just wait doing bad stuff until this is over and you can point to it. Or don't do it at all. Or don't do it yeah. at all. And don't be the black hat hacker. No, be the nice guy. Be the nice guy. There will be the some lessons guy. about being the good guy as well in Elmer's class, I believe. Uh, ethical hacking. Or Arnim's and class. And also in computer training. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well. We're going to try to make contact to Sebastian, and I hope it's working, because he's on a, a mobile uh, connection. Yeah, so he's, at the moment he's in France, and that's basically because of this minor. Um, <laughs> he's doing his end, end of term internship there. Uh, I think he's got it pretty good. Uh, he's got a nice studio apartment there. So I hope to some more Hello? Oh yeah, I think it's working. Ah, <laughs> we're doing the presentation in English? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We all, we've already covered a bit, so maybe you could tell uh, the class something about your research project for CF? Of course. Uh, so, uh, during the minor, you have the choice to do a computer forensic uh, research course or e-discovery course. Uh, and last year, I, t I uh, chose to do the uh, resource course, in which um, uh, you uh, pick a subject you want to learn more about and to uh, do research in. Um, and so I uh, made a research su suggestion for uh, Arnim and Elmer uh, to uh, uh, look into uh, anti-malware techniques uh, focusing on multi-process malware, uh, where uh, regular malware scanners will look at uh, file patterns uh, or even uh, uh, on a simple level uh, the behavior of an application. Uh, it has been proven that uh, those current techniques are uh, easily circumvented by, uh, uh, by splitting malware into different processes that communicate with each other and both uh, execute part of the malware. Um, so, uh, um, uh, so that's where, uh, where I wrote an application for, KML Detect, and we are now in the process of uh, writing uh, and publishing a paper. So, uh, if you're interested in uh, Doing research, this is one of the few opportunities you will have during the uh, during your study to um, yeah, to delve into some serious research. Yeah, and and your project was also uh, almost published in a in a. Are you gone? Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, we uh, submitted the first version of our paper uh, to a scientific journal. Uh, from it, we uh, we got uh, feedback, so we're still working on. Uh, revising it and trying to uh, publish it again. Okay. Um, we also covered a little bit of our project for NICHEV. Can you maybe you could tell something about the the the, the your free radius uh, module? Ah, oh, yeah. Um, so part of the uh, project at NICHEV was to uh, write an extension for the free radius server. Uh, I assume you already talked about uh, the radius protocol a little bit. Uh, very little bit, no. Very little bit. <laughs> Not say no. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, Radius is a protocol, uh, an authentication and authorization protocol. Um, so you ask the Radius server uh, 
if you, if the Ravi server can uh, authenticate someone uh, for you if they uh, if the credentials uh, are known to the Ravi server. Uh, and the, we were asked by NICF to write a module that adds uh, extra authentication uh, possibilities. Uh, because uh, radio servers can be set up in a chain. So maybe I'm at uh, the H HVA and I want to connect with uh, a radio server at uh, the UVA. Uh, and I, I first asked the HVA radio server, I, I want to authenticate with this UVA account and the HVA radio server will then uh, connect to the UV, uh, UVA radio server um, to ask for those credentials, or to uh, validate those credentials. And our extension uh, allows um, third party radio servers uh, to add extra authentic uh, Authent uh, authorization information along the way. So uh, the HVA server could uh, see. Uh, well, I, I can't. I can tell you if this uh, if these credentials uh, 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 are correct, uh, but I can tell you that this user um, has access to uh, some extra resources. Um, yeah, so in a, in a nutshell, that's what uh, the pre radius module was about. Okay. Do you want to tell us a bit how you ended up in France? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, well, through, through Arne. Uh, <laughs> Thanks. Uh, 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 as, uh, as I just told, I was doing uh, the computer forensic research uh, course. Um, and uh, he mentioned that uh, here uh, in Laval, in France, uh, there is a, a laboratory uh, which uh, does a lot of uh, molar research. And actually, uh, the director of the laboratory is also the editor of the uh, scientific <coughs> journal uh, we are trying to submit our paper to. Um, so they got into contact, and uh, they're uh, forming a very interesting project right now here at uh, the laboratory uh, to develop an uh, anti-malware uh, pro uh, program. Uh, and my, my uh, graduate internship uh, involves writing a part of that uh, application. Okay. Well, I think that's about it, right? Yeah. Well, thank you very much, Sebastian, for your time. Uh, thank you. Enjoy your stay, even if the internet's crap. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, success. I'm uh, talking over uh, a mobile network right now because the the internet in the dormitories is a bit uh, slow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, bye, Sebastian. <coughs> oh, crap. Seriously? Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Just in time. <coughs> okay, well, was about it, it, right? Yeah, we have oh, just. Uh, no, not really. One yeah. slide. I mean, you're gonna uh, end up in a good position, in a, a good uh, final internship, if you do your best. And that's gonna mean if you're not gonna do anything right now, you're probably gonna end up in a bad place. It's a bit very negative, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, think you think well. I think you know what he means. Uh, if, the, if you do the project at a, another company or something, it's really good for your network to get some access into that company and maybe Make sure you get an internship there. So yeah, take a chance there. Um, do you guys have any questions for us? No? No. OK. Uh, we usually hang around in the Hafia IRC chat. So if you have any questions, uh, just throw them in there. Uh, and we might answer them. We well, we time. probably will. Yeah, we <laughs> probably will. <laughs> and well, uh, well the final thing we have to say is have some fun. Um, creatively follow the rules. Or else, um, well, well, this will happen. <laughs> <laughs> or you get Arnim uh, very angry. Like and it's about it. Okay, thank you, Now,